interest is to just think and reflect about the question of the uh, and a good way to start is to think about the unlike a pandemic in addition to the pandemic of COVID or everybody's familiar with the pandemic of, of police and think of how people respond for instance to the question of SARS in Nigeria and I love people come up come up with apps and use social media in a way that shows the importance of digital humanities more generally. So whether people are using hashtags to actually outrage in regards to bring back our girls or roads must fall in South Africa, you have social media as an important digital space that farms the importance of some of these conversations. But again, this is at, at the level of digital culture and the digital analysis as an object of study. I wrote a PhD on Nigerian social media in relation to its, its enabling of popular culture. So my interest is basically in terms of digital analysis from this perspective of an object of, an object of study, something you investigate. But in more recent times, I've also been applying digital tools to, to other humanities questions. And I'll probably talk about this in relation to, again, the question of impact. Why does matter? Something that comes to mind very, very quickly is the unfortunate response of the Jonathan administration to the question of history as a subject in Nigerian universities. Everybody remembers when the government decided to prescribe the pedagogic transmission of history for secondary school students. And a lot of people thought that was outrageous. Now, some other people decided to go on, so on social media to create platforms in which people can arrest this, what you might call unfriending of the past, using social media basically to offer projects and, and initiatives that document the past, keep historical memory alive. I mentioned this example just to say this is a good example of the intersection between the digital humanities and something that has, a, has an important public and scholarly value in terms of history itself. So if you go to the Twitter page of the Nigerian Nostalgic Project, or even the Facebook group, you, and I know a lot of you here yeah, may be members of these groups, you find people engaging with this with historical past in Nigeria, showing us how social media becomes an important archival location for the connections between history, and Nigerian history in particular, and, and the digital humanities. Now, my question, however, has always been, beyond social media, what else could we do with the digital platforms? And how can we have impact in, in specific terms as people who are interested in the digital humanities? And I just said, I, I just tried to assert some responses, guesses, speculations to this question by, by foregrounding two things, the importance of connection and the importance of creation, right? So to have impact as DH scholars, I think we should be thinking more about, you know, connecting with existing knowledge on global DH. And Austin has given us just a very thin slice of what might be available out there. There's the need, and, and I think this forum is also that kind of opportunity. People are interested in connecting with what's happening. There are lots of books and materials people can read. We can send out slides and links on starter courses people can, can do that are interested in, in, in the DH. I think Leah mentioned earlier the, Harvard, the ongoing, Harvard, an ongoing Harvard program on DHI did that class and I, I thought it was brilliant. There are a lot of things we could do as a way of connecting with existing knowledge. Some years ago, I was thinking of a digital archive of the IFA Divination Corpus. And I said to myself, what exactly could we do with this vast epistemological repertoire of the Yoruba worldview? And I thought to myself, why not try to connect with the existing knowledge on this? So I looked for works done by Nigerian scholars on this. I, I found something by, by two UI professors, something they did many years ago. What I was doing was basically to try to not just connect 
with knowledge outside of Africa, but we look at what people within the continent are doing because it is important, especially for, for visibility. Somebody mentioned earlier, I think it was Abiodun Belo, the Yoruba cultural and language project they were invested in. And I tried to look for it online, I didn't find it. As part of connecting with, with, with knowledge, it is also important that you, you, you think of how you connect with other people to make your work visible, to, to find a step in the community of scholars who are interested in doing the kind of stuff you do. So there's the importance of connecting with existing knowledge. There's the importance of connecting with people who do the things you do. And of course, connecting just the network of other scholars and make your work visible. But I think what is even more important for me is thinking about connection in terms of connecting with those in, in, in communities beyond the university environment. And I'm thinking of Yabakon value. I'm thinking of those tech, tech, up, tech clusters and, and, and spaces you have in places like Yaba. People doing great stuff, but do not consider themselves members of the academic community. It was very low also mentioned the importance of mainstreaming. I think there's an important, I mean, the, the, the proverbial connection between town and gap. This is where we need it the most. We need to connect with these guys that are in the industry, guys doing programming, guys creating, creating digital presence, pre presence that attract people like Mark and, 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 and Twitter's Jack Dorsey. If these guys come to Nigeria to interact with these guys, with these local guys in Lagos and elsewhere, it's because they understand their, their, their global relevance as, as digital entrepreneurs and people who have things the world needs. The academic community, the academic DH community in Nigeria needs people like, like, like those guys in Yabatek in terms of connecting with them to foreground and articulate a strong sense of the relevance of what we do as dear scholars. Now, something else I think is important is not just to connect with the existing knowledge, connect with others in our network, connect with ideas and projects that make what we do and our interests more visible. Something else we need to do is to also create our own projects. So, social media has been the face of the digital humanities in Nigeria, and I think it's time we begin to look beyond social media. Now, I, I, I do not think social media needs to be needs to be spoken of in negative terms. Like I said, that's, that's a fundamental object of study for me. But I think it's important we create projects. And in the process of creating projects, we'll probably make mistakes. We'll, we'll experiment with things. So this particular website, I, I call it the Chino Achebe Digital Project or something. The Chino Achebe Digital Archive. This was many years ago. I, 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 had, I had this screenshot of it just for my own records. But the importance of this then for me was, I, I was just thinking of creating something for scholars of Achebe who might be interested in having a platform online where everything about Achebe might be, might be located. Of course, this did not work. I, I didn't really have the kind of technical skills I, I believe I needed to do this. But this was a WordPress-based based website through which I just got that stuff basically. I was learning, I was trying to create something because there's the need to create knowledge. And of course, to create knowledge as somebody interested in DH projects, you will have to create things, you'll have to create objects, you'll have to apply to, to for your, your interest in knowledge production. And like other, other speakers have said earlier, we are in a moment where in order to arrest the epistemological crisis of the continent will need to engage with technology. Now, I do think there's some kind of epistemic, not, epistemic crisis in, in a country. You, you find a book on African studies, a book on Nigeria produced in London, and you can get it in Lagos. To address things like that, to produce knowledge about ourselves, to take our own culture, to take ourselves seriously as human beings who love knowledge for its sake, it's high time we began to think of what technologies can do for us. And one way to do that and achieve that is to create things, create works that people can find useful. So I think a year ago or two years ago, I decided to do something in relation to, in relation to Nollywood. So 
through street photography, go around the streets of Lagos and other parts of the country and just photograph all stars of old Nollywood films, new Nollywood films, and ju just try to look for archives that keep these posters. Why are, why are posters important? I believe that you, 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 you can talk about the history of Nollywood in, in academic conferences. You can write books, and many books have been written on Nollywood. But nobody pays attention to what para tests like a poster, para tests such as posters may, may do, especially in terms of helping people understand the history of, history of film or, or the video film in the country. This particular poster, for instance, by Basila predates Nollywood. I was interested in bringing these posters together just to be able to think about how the material aspects of Nollywood productions can help us understand the history of popular culture in Nigeria. So what I needed to do was to look for a data management software that allows me just some kind of public exhibitions, collect and curate these materials without necessarily having any expert knowledge myself. So what I've done basically, I saw, I, I saw somebody post a YouTube link to, 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 to the two voyants and I said to myself, this is exactly what we need to do. Go on YouTube, go on, on Google. There are lots of things you can find that have been done already to help you understand these tools and you just use them. So as part of creating this project, as part of uh, for grounding the, the, the impact of DH projects, I'm interested in not just connecting, but in creating. And to create, to look for existing tools, existing resources that, that can help you without ne necessarily having any digital knowledge or any previous technical skills yourself. Something else I thought I could do, and I started this recently, is to look at the popular nature market literature and, and, and think of the fact that the digital copies of this important source of African popular culture are located mostly in the West. So the Kennedy Library at UI probably has materials and, uh, and you know, copies of these pamphlets. But what exactly becomes of them? If something happens to Kinetic tomorrow and these materials are, uh, become vulnerable to destruction, we'll probably lose them. But if you go to Abata, the University of Abata, if you go to the University of Florida, if you come to KU, these universities have collections of the nature market literature. And for me, that, that's something that is painful because I believe UI, Unilag, and some of these schools should be the original locations of this, the, of this kind of works because it, they, they belong to us. In any case, in terms of creating something new from this, I go to the University of Kansas collection and I decided to use JQ, which is basic, basically a tool that allows you generate static websites. It's open source. It doesn't need any form of database. And it means you can easily transfer whatever you create from, from I mean, through a flash drive from device to device. And what I'm doing basically is to do a scholarly critical edition of, of pamphlets. So I'm creating new editions of as many pamphlets as possible, trying to create an archive or a repository, if you like, of as many pamphlets as I can find as a way of providing more context, more nuance to the popular market literature. Now, what does this do? Why is this important? I think this is important because it helps people, it opens up the nature market literature to a new generation of people who you, who you might call digital, digital natives, people, or even new researchers of African popular culture. A lot of, a lot of research from Obiechina in the 70s to what Stephen in New World and perhaps Onokome have done recently capture the nuance of this important aspect of market literature or popular culture in, in, in Africa. But the thing is, could there be new insights into the nature market literature that the technologization, the digitization of these pamphlets can help us understand? So recently I, I, I read one of the pamphlets and I saw a variant of Nigerian Pidgin English that is no longer in use today. So what was the kind of Pidgin English spoken in the 60s? And why is that different? How is that different from what people speak today? Those, that's what just one example of the kind of research questions that can emerge from this. And I'm speaking, I believe, in respect to just the pursuit of knowledge for its sake. This is one example of a project 
I I'm, I'm currently trying to correct this. It's not public yet. But the point of this is just to say that we need not just only to connect, but also to create our own digital works. And in, 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 that, in that commitment, we're able to do something that makes digital scholarship in, on the continent more visible. I'm the last thing you I'll, have about two minutes more. I'm, I'm actually done. No more slides. But the last thing I want to say is the importance of collaboration. I was happy to join this because I know that I'll, I'll listen to people like Austin, I'll listen to James, I'll listen to Prof, just to learn and, and to be part of what people are doing. If you really are interested in doing DH work, at some point you know that you will have to collaborate with people. And that's why mentioning those at Yabacom, the, the, the guys in the tech clusters, bringing them to the campus, those are the kind of things I believe we need to do. Some months ago, I, 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 I was on Facebook just to chat up Austin to say, I want to do this, I want to do that. I want to do a digital map of police killings in Nigeria. What can we do? And, 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 and I will share some ideas. You, we need to connect, we need to create, and we need to collaborate. That's the point I'm making. And why all of this is important is that I do think we have an epistemic crisis on our hands. If knowledge about ourselves is only produced by outsiders, then we are not taking ourselves seriously. And, I, and I, I don't say this because I'm outside of the continent, but I'm outside or inside. This is the same point. My interest in all of this started back at UI with Shalom Lauren. You'll be taking me to the Connecticut Library, showing me a map of 16th century Africa and how the map was lying somewhere in a very poor condition. I said to myself, no, we can't do this to ourselves. So all of this matter because we want to address a crisis of epistemology and digital technologies will help us to do that. I thank you for your time.